And another win for the law office of Morrissey Fisher. New Alert versus the Department of Homeland Security. This was an MSPB case, a wrongful termination back in D.C. And this was before Administrative Judge Paul D. Tommaso, who I think is an excellent judge. And not just because this is the second time in a row that he has ruled for me. Uh, it, he just writes a very, very solid opinion. Here, the client, Nicole Newellard. She is from South Florida. She is a criminal investigator, and she receives a notice of proposed removal. And what did she do that was so horrible? Well... She had two violations. She had a lack of candor and a failure to follow instructions. What is this case actually about? Well, she is a criminal investigator and she's placed on a project of a large scanning operation of old files to a new data system. And that is not typically what she does. And wow. The instructions are a mess. The project management is a mess. And basically, to cover the manager's incompetence, Miss Newellart is blamed for a number of files that got shredded that her supervisory chain insisted should not have been shredded. And they claim they never gave her an order to shred the documents. And when they found out that Miss Newellart did some shredding, the managers claim she lied about it and thereby demonstrated a lack of candor, which is the big charge here, because to not follow instructions generally is not a justification for removal. So the aim here, in this case, was to beat the lack of candor charge, which is exactly what we did. And the judge mitigates the termination down to a mere 21 day suspension. And I think the best way to explain what happened at this trial is just let's get right to the highlights. These are actual excerpts from the MSPB hearing. The first witness was Joseph Kenny, who wrote the proposal to remove. You told her to quote, get the key from Pedro, right? When we were done, yes. Not when you were done, <laughs> not, not at all when you were done. In fact, we, let's turn to your deposition. You said, uh, you, you told her on June 6th to get the key from him, right? Mm -hmm. yes, yes, right? This is a my cross-examination of this uh, individual, the supervisor, the first line supervisor, Joe Kenny, and he is contending that he never gave an instruction to Miss Newellart to shred the documents, and yet uh, he admits in his deposition that no, he told her to get the key from Pedro. Who was Pedro? He was a utility guy in charge of the shred box key. And what happens is, is when you shred documents, there's like a trash can. There's like on the top of the trash can, there's a, a slot where you put in your documents. You can do a whole lot at once, and there's a key for that slot. So my point here at cross-examination is, look, guy, why would you have told her to get the key from Pedro if you didn't want her shredding documents? And you're telling us that you went through all those files and you found stuff missing? Yes. Okay. And where's the evidence of that? It's currently locked into um, evidence storage. Okay. So it's not in this case, right? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. So we, we don't know, other than your word, whether any of that is true, correct? This is an interesting part of the trial, and it left an impression on the administrative judge. And it's just typical federal bureaucracy, federal government agency witnesses. They testify to things, and there's no other evidence to support 
what they've said. And it, it gets to a point, as you'll see, like, then why do we believe you? And that's really what this case was about, was a series of those kinds of questions. So now, if there's no electronic evidence, which you've said there isn't, okay, how then, or wouldn't you agree with me that there's no way to prove these specifications on that charge. Well, we could just stop the tape right there because the answer doesn't really matter. And of course, there's going to be an objection. Uh, and the judge probably, I think in this case, did sustain the objection. It doesn't matter. The, the question itself is the damage to the case. The point is made that the agency, by not providing the evidence it's supposed to, it cannot prove the case against Nicole Newlart. Did you ever tell her specifically, do not shred anything? No, I did not specifically say that. Did you ever tell her specifically, do not put any of these documents in a shred bucket? No. Okay. And what's amazing here is this is kind of the whole case. I mean, you, you, you read these proposed removals and you read these notice of removal decisions and they say just a lot of confusing blather and point blank. Okay, these are not very esoteric questions. It's like, did you actually tell her don't shred any documents? The guy said no. So what are we doing here? And that's just the typical cross-examination of these people who, who just think they can just run all over federal employees who they don't like. And without a competent attorney on cross-examination of preparing and looking through the materials and discovering what is it that we need to prove or to stop them from proving this case, they usually are going to get away with it, but not this time. The next witness was equally as bad for the government, Rachel Neal who was the deciding official on the proposed termination. And you'll see here, it, it, these are just gonna be very, some very, very basic questions that she just has no clue as to what the answers are. When you issued this particular uh, removal decision for Ms. Newellart, lack of candor, what, did you believe lack of candor means? So again, lack of candor on the, on the situation with Ms. Newlark was her statement in regards to her actions with the documents. So for example- uh, that, I move to strike, it, that, that's not answering my question. I'm not yeah. asking the question of how it applied to Ms. Newlark, I'm asking, what does lack of candor mean? What does it mean? And I mean, you can just hear, you know, these are pretty straightforward questions like, ma'am, you terminated this kind woman, Nicole Newellart, who had worked for the federal government for 20 years on a lack of candor charge. Okay, what is lack of candor? What does that mean? And I don't know if these people, do they study for this? Do they even just take everything for granted? Like, you have to really be able to break these cases down right into their elements. Like, you were explaining this to a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old. You came home from work. I got fired today. Why? Lack of candor. What's that? Very simple. What? What is it? And it's just you, you hear the pause. And this is just someone who's just kind of doesn't have a clue as to what she actually did. What I do recall is that um, eventually, based off of PLD decisions, she was provided all of those things back to her. And um, Ma'am, I'm not interested in, in going home at 7 o'clock tonight, okay? I, please just answer my question, all right? My question simply was, was that topic discussed at the meeting? And I believe you answered you don't recall. And then you went on something about her badge got back to her. Something I, I don't recall. 
You don't recall. Okay. Now, when you say you don't recall, is it, it might have happened and you just don't remember it? Or is it, no, I'm sure it didn't happen. That didn't come up. What do you mean by I don't recall? It may have happened and I just, I do not recall. Okay. So it may have happened and it, you do not recall. And isn't it true? You may have said to uh, Miss Newellard when, after she complained about it, you may have said, well, sorry, but that's how, that's how things are done here. Right. Yes. That could have been my response. Okay. Got it. Okay. And here you see, again, this person is just not believable, dodging questions all over the place, and we hammered her. And that was the difference in this case. And Nicole Newellard, wonderful, wonderful client, she testified in a very straightforward manner. And it's just another win. I was assisted by law clerk uh, Ben Alpert, did a great job pretty complicated case, believe it or not, with all of the shreddings and documents and 22 ways of what should have been done according to these nitwits and wasn't done. And ultimately, our client uh, helped us achieve victory here, another win at the MSPB. If you have been wrongfully terminated and you need representation or you already have an attorney, but the attorney is not demonstrating to you that he or she knows what they're doing or knows what they're doing well enough to win these cases. We invite you to contact our office. This is what we do. And we invite you to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel.